Berlini. Scotland's biggest prison. Berlini prison is terrible. There's a lot of deaths in here through drugs. Just fights, arguments. It's just a difficult place to be. Once home to the Lockerbie bomber, now home to the most notorious murderers, sex offenders and career criminals. Coming back into jail now, it's scary. It's changed so much. It's like even the drug culture in jail's changed. And people are punching people randomly for no reason. In my hall, you're talking 90% of the hall are taking some sort of drug. Now, ITV News has been given exclusive access inside to speak to prisoners and guards. Good afternoon, Peter. Welcome to Berlini. There's no mobile phones, and if you follow the rules as discussed, you'll be nice and safe. We see behind these walls into Scotland's cycle of addiction, crime and incarceration. We're in A Hall in Berlin, it's one of five halls. We commonly hold between 1,200 and 1,300 prisoners, but we're only designed for 987. Overcrowding is a real issue for us and Scotland, because Scotland is one of the highest incarceration rates in Western Europe. So that continues to be one of the problems in trying to manage people. What proportion of your prisoners here in Berlin are here because of or related to addiction to drugs? It, it probably and varied, probably about 80 per cent there and thereabouts in terms of drugs or alcohol or some form of substance in that. I think what, you, what people are recognising now, Scotland's got a specific problem. Berlini is an old Victorian prison. The walls are designed to look oppressive. Life in here feels very stressful, even for me, and I know I'm getting out. When there's no realistic chance for prisoners to escape, they look for ways to escape even in their own mind, and that's where the drugs come in. The drugs here have been smuggled in through the soles of these training shoes. And these are street Valium. Street Valium. Um, We've been shown how the drugs are being smuggled in. The prison guard wants to remain anonymous. We, we try every time we, we detect something, we stop it, and something else, there's another system in, in play. It's just keeping on, trying to keep ahead of the game. It's hard. Very difficult. Very difficult. Unfortunately, people want to be taking drugs in prisons, and we try to stop that and, and take them and try and provide support to come off drugs. Prisoners have now been handed a new way of getting drugs in. During the pandemic, 7,600 inmates in Scotland were issued with their very own mobile phone. The Scottish government spent £2.7 million on these handsets to compensate for a lack of outside contact in lockdown. They were supposed to be tamper-proof, but ITV News has learned some of the phones were hacked almost immediately and many now operate with illegal SIM cards. As soon as you give a prisoner a phone, they're very, very ingenious. See, if they put their mind to it, they can do anything at all. Within, within hours, the tamper-proof was gone. Every single SIM card, knowing the man we've had inside here as well, they use them for communication to, uh, to get things brought in as well. Uh, how many phones do you reckon have been tampered with since they were issued? I'd done uh, a check of the phones probably uh, in one of the halls here in March time and of the 300 prisoners that were there there was probably about 100 phones tampered with altogether. So a third of them just in yeah. that one hall? Yeah. Once these deals are done drugs have been simply thrown over the prison walls but the means of smuggling drugs in is getting more complex. Letters are being soaked in drugs, then posted to the prison. If they reach the cells, the prisoners dissolve the letters and drink the drugs. This is the cat and mouse game. The criminals are trying to stay one step ahead and the prison staff are trying to keep up. The truth is all prisons are struggling to tackle the supply of drugs. That's why Berlini guards are now focusing on reducing the demand. Treating the addiction while they have a captive audience in here. Prisoners like Mark have been offered a life skills class. He is a convicted murderer. He's serving life for stabbing a man to death while under the influence. In this recovery programme, he's now handed a blade and taught to cook. It also uses, there is an element of trust, I mean, that's your hand on a sharp object yeah, there. Uh -huh, definitely. So uh, when prisoners come up here, they will get, get to utilise it nice and stuff, and it does build that trust up between prisoners and staff as well. People need to want to change, so some people can come over here and be involved in the cooking and that, but at the same time they can maybe be away and get back into drugs when they go over the halls or whatever. Uh, but if somebody wants to make a change, then it'll work. The addiction support for prisoners here is unconventional, potentially high risk. 
The recovery cafe is delivered by an outside charity and it operates with one condition. No prison guards are allowed in the room. Why does it matter that you do this with no prison guards in the room? If they openly discuss maybe using drugs or you know, having violent thoughts, that can go against them. Um, and they might not get parole or they might get in trouble. So it's so important that it's a safe environment. You helping people, do you see a difference? I see a difference every day. I see a difference when we come and do a gate liberation and Joe Bloggs that has been using chaotically every day in prison is presenting himself at the gate, clean and sober and ready to move into an accommodation and live his best life. Here the inmates talk each other through recovery and prison life. I mean, but we need to be tooled right up. Different kind of tools, guys. We need to have lots and lots of coping strategies, do you know what I mean? Left alone with the inmates, we hear the majority have a familiar path. Childhood in care or surrounded by violence and addiction, an adult life in and out of prison. How many people in here are in prison because of addiction? Just about everyone. My name's Derek Hobbs. Um, I'm doing 27 months for uh, a COVID assault on a police officer. 14, 15 times I've been in prison from the age of 16. Uh, so I'm just trying to, like I say, the recovery cafes, that's helped me. That's probably been one of the, the biggest helps for me, for my sobriety. So I've got the coping mechanisms now where I know I can get. I've got support there. Hi, my name's Stephen Telford. I'm serving an eight-month sentence for assault and refusing a breath test. There's been times when I've hated myself, I've been disappointed, I've beat myself up. Now I'm in a place, probably through recovery group and sharing my experience, where I'm starting to enjoy my own company. I'm, I'm proud that I can say naughty drugs. One prisoner allowed to be left in the room with us has killed a man while at the height of his addiction. Coming here, He's been guided away from drugs and now chairs this support group to help others. Through coming to places like this, this is where I've found the tools and the ways and means to keep going and to find another day clean. That's all I can do, just one day at a time. You regret your addiction? Of course, 100%. Do you regret your crime? 100%. Every crime I've committed, I've committed some horrible, horrible offences against people, do you know? And I live with that guilt every day, you know. I pray every morning, you know, for, for, for people that have hurted. All I can say is sorry. This ball of light is going up past your calves, into your knees. This recovery work in Berlini is getting inmates to a better place, drug-free and looking for a life away from crime. The benefits of offering this can also be measured in brass tacks, given imprisonment costs the public on average £35,000 per inmate per year. I've been here for 10 years. I used to work in a secure unit before that and I've seen some of the young boys from the secure unit coming through the prison system as well. So it's just a constant revolving door. How do you break that cycle? Criminality, addiction? I think it's just um, people realising their potential in themselves and what they can do themselves. Um, they have to want to change themselves for a start. And that's the benefit of hope for the resource hub that we've got here in Berlin. It can help guys have a look at not only their addictions but their lifestyle as a whole and hopefully address all the different aspects of their life to stop them coming back into prison. There is one problem we keep hearing again and again. Inmates can leave here drug free only to be housed in hostels surrounded by drugs. See if I left prison and uh, see my temporary furnished flat, like my own temporary furnished flat instead of a hostel, I'd, I'd flourish, I'd, I'd do it no problem, I'd, 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 I wouldn't come back to prison. It's a fact every time I get out of prison, I'm either homeless, on the streets or in a hostel. And when you're in the environment, so you're in about is drunk, drink and drug. Is that where people relapse? Oh, I definitely. Is that where you've relapsed? That's where I've relapsed, right, every single time, without a doubt. The guys are terrified they go into hostels, for like a breeding, breeding ground for addiction. It kills them. Basically. Ultimately, this recovery programme inside Berlin can't force prisoners to make the right decisions. But the governor says his mission here is giving people ways to cope with what awaits them on the outside. It's a difficult world to be in, particularly people who don't have either the, the literacy or the social skills or the ability or the confidence or self-esteem and able to engage in these things. So they'll withdraw into what they know or they'll use drugs to cope and mask or they'll turn to other risky behaviours. And then you see them here again? We get them here, and, you, and if you start the cycle again, if we get them, we will. Do you think that 
as a society, we are failing some people. We, we are seeing early morbidity in young adult males. Then we must be failing somewhere, we must be. Too many are still stuck in that revolving door of addiction and crime, and it only takes them one of two ways, back behind bars or to an early grave. Another number in Scotland's drug death crisis. Peter Smith, News at 10, Glasgow.